I've got the cricket on, and, and this might be the start of the podcast. Namib- Namibia's badge, I can't say Namibia. It is very, very much mid 80s Sheffield Eagles. If I were Gary Hedrington, I'd be on the phone suing him. <laughs> and not, Ireland have also got a cricketer who looks a bit like me, which is a bit concerned. Not the hair. I mean, the hair's dreadful looking at it. But, I can't comment on hair. I'd like to be able to do that with mine. I mean, it, it hides the fact that, look at that. It's, it's, it's all gone. Midlife crisis. I know that but, feeling. <laughs> I mean, the good news is, uh, 420 not live, all that. Um, the magazine has just arrived because we're having major personal issues in Wakefield. We're having major issues with lots of things. Um, buses, things being delivered to shops, and magazine. But, but thankfully, the uh, magazine arrived yesterday, so I haven't quite devoured it yet. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to I would to say, them. although I'm, I'm biased, a great story about Lebanese Rugby League in there who had their grand final mm. last night. Uh, well done, the Wolves, who beat the Lycans 26-18. Uh, but just the fact that they have had such determination to play a domestic competition in the, in the toughest of circumstances. Um, you know, I think I'd, I would urge everybody to, to read that article. Yeah, as much as I can learn about the personal arriving, not having electricity and, uh, you know, right Medicine, stuff. you know, that kind of stuff. It's... Things are slightly more important than, uh, you know, not that the magazine isn't important. Absolutely. Uh, we haven't spoken since, uh, well, the, the women's grand final, which we were both at, but uh, the men's grand final, which you haven't spoken about. Um, it seems a long time ago now. <laughs> Catalans uh, playing St. Helens. Uh, everyone in the media wanted Catalans to win, of course. That's what all the St. Helens fans were saying on social media. We all hate Saints. Um, uh, but Catalans didn't win. And St. Helens won, and they, they won three in a row, which we won't refer to by the term everyone's referring it to. Um, it seems a long time ago now, Phil, but, but what happened? You were there. Well, I, I remember doing a piece with Mr. Jay Davidson of, a, of this parish, um, straight outside the ground after the game, which people can probably pick up somewhere. I, I don't know how this technology works. Uh, and I just really enjoyed it. Thought it was a fantastic game. Had everything in that you could sell, um, including controversy, including heroism, uh, including a, a team for the ages winning and, and a, a team who will be possibly for the ages coming very close to winning. I think we over obsessed with how many people were there because that's what we do. And the millions of people that were saying there aren't many people there if they'd actually bought a ticket there would have been millions of people there um no I, I thought the best team won but it was marginal um a couple of decisions you could point to the catalan feeling aggrieved about um the main talking point was should or shouldn't it have been a penalty try just after half time um we go on it, uh, get one viewing of it in the press box we were side on that side on to it um i wasn't sure at the time whether fuad yaha would have scored um clearly it didn't determine the outcome of the game. I think more importantly, the Dragons had 10 minutes when they had an extra player, couldn't make that count. They had two goal line dropouts with 10 minutes to go, couldn't make that count. Um, so whilst I understand Bernard Gouache's frustration, I don't think the referee or the referee's performance did determine the outcome of the game. It was a very physical, some would say brutal game. But Ben Garcia going into the press conference afterwards with one of his hands three times the size of the other and going, oh, it's nothing. Um, and then finding out that he'd made 48 tackles in the game, the highest of any player. That's rugby league. Um, they're, they're, we've had two astonishing grand finals given the regular seasons that we've had over the last two years. I have nothing um, but admiration and, and commendability for both St. Helens and Catalan. And what shouldn't be forgotten is that this Saints team is a little bit special. Uh, to do what they've done um, in a salary cap sport uh, with a core of young kids that they've bought through and developed and some superstars, a couple of whom were playing in their last game. Uh, it just had everything. I, I loved every minute of it and I can't speak highly enough of both teams. It would be very hard to not say they will win a fourth in a row and perhaps another double of grand finals as well as well, the so- winning bit. Surprise of surprises, they've just announced Conrad Hurrell. I, I, can't, I as, mean, I can't believe that. As no. their fifth signing. They, they have recruited really well, considering they're losing people like Theo Farge and, and Lachlan Coote. Um, I don't think they're going to be any worse next year. And I think we said it at this time last year, it's up to everybody else to get up to their level. 
Um, you cannot fault them for what they've achieved and their recruitment. They've got James Roby for one more year. Uh, they're already bringing in Joey Lusick as his potential successor. They, they just do things right. And you looked at Lewis Dodd, who might not have been the most influential man on the pitch come the grand final, but everything he did was quality. And that came partly through easing him into their system the right way. I think he, he may not be, or he may already have played far off 50 games, but because he's been eased in as part hooker, part halfback, when he plays from the beginning, he now looks like the finished article. So I, I, I just think they they are a great benchmark side for, for this part of where we are in our Super League history. And yeah, they may very well win four, but I, I do think that Catalan aren't going to go away. And if it's right that they're going to get Mitchell Pierce to replace James Maloney, then clearly that I think they the experience of this year will will stand them in good stead. We can totally new coaching staff. They're going to have to do something. Warrington, are they going to play differently under Daryl Powell, who's just arrived? Clearly, that the makeup of their squad is going to look slightly different. Um, that may may make them finally get over the line. I do think Leeds have recruited really well. I think uh, David Fussy Tour again is a bit of a statement signing. He's a great finisher. They just need to find a way to get the ball to him. But again, with Aidan Caesar and Blake Austin added, they've every intention of looking like they're doing that. So. I, you know, Huddersfield could be anything um, because Ian Watson's second year in charge got more of the people he wants. I, I actually think we could, have, yeah, but for the fact that we'll have far too many fixtures, <laughs> we could have a really good season next year. Blake Austin playing on the opposite wing. Is that, is that where he's going to play? Yeah. Well, he, he, yeah, absolutely. Loose forward, I reckon. And when you say uh, Wyington will be a much, well, look differently next year, you're not referring to Ollie Holmes' hair, which is, I mean, I, I can talk, but I, I have no idea what he's done. Um, I, I was at uh, the home of rugby league on, on Wednesday because my nephew wanted to go because uh, his friend's dad was playing for the Grant Millington All Stars against uh, Wakefield. People keep asking, "What was the score?" No one cares. It's a testimonial. It doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> exactly. matter. Uh, although, uh, where are the highlights? I know much mirth caused on Twitter by me saying Andy Wilson still got it, and people not thinking I was referring to the one who used to play for Wakefield as opposed to the one who used to write for the Guardian. But you know. That's, <laughs> That's rugby league for you. Wayne Price looks exactly the same as he did. And, and Grant Millington does as well, although he shaved his beard off at halftime, she looks slightly different. But on testimonials, I, players who've played 10 years at one club, yes. People say, why wasn't there a big crowd at Jamaica versus uh, England Knights of the week? You can't really call it a testimonial for somebody who's been at a club for a year. I know it's for 10 years of Jordan Turner's service to the sport or whatever, but you've not got that same bite in from Castlewood fans for a player who's been there for 10 months or whatever. I was I was talking on this very subject to a very very esteemed professional player who has only recently retired, um, and of course, when you get into modern professional sport full time, nobody stays for ten years at a club. I mean, it's almost as if your next two years is the only um, how far you can look ahead, and then it's a contract renegotiation, and and that longevity is rare rather than. Our good friend Ikram Butt, who has, has, has graced our airwaves on an occasions, you know, he spent four years in the Leeds Rhinos A team or, or Leeds Rugby League A team because clearly there weren't Rhinos there. Um, nobody would spend four years in a reserve grade anymore if that's your profession. So clearly, 10 years service, I think there is a case for rewarding. Uh, 10 years at one club should be incredibly rewarded and um, it, is, it is an amazing feat. Uh, we'll talk about the internationals in a bit because uh, we, we've got an inter- we've got an international coach coming up in a few months. I've just remembered that I've not put it on uh, YouTube yet. Um, the women's grand final, which links into this, uh, was the day after. A um, brilliantly made my our league debut. Um, I wasn't vetted either; just just thrown on there. So hopefully, no one in our league finds out. Needs must. Um, which was you know great from alongside Dave Parkinson doing the the women's shield final, which they didn't win a shield, they won a cup. So you know. It was a brilliant game. It was great, wasn't it? Featherston, favourites going in. Big story, obviously, Andrea Dobson retiring. But Huddersfield, who started the season as uh, potential no-hope, has ended with silverware. And signing Sean Hoyle from Castleford, which... That's the statement of intent. Yeah. I'm surprised that that didn't get more play in the rugby league press than it did. Because that was... Well, that's a big signing. I don't think it's mentioned anywhere in the paper this week, which... Which surprises me because that is that is a big statement signing, as you say. It is. 
Um, so Huddersfield will be better next year, you would feel. I mean, the competition as a whole is going to be interesting, and that's something touched on in the interview coming up in a couple of minutes. But um, you know, how Fev change will be interesting. Um, I was at the Wakefield Awards dinner on, oh, well, dinner, pie and peas, uh, the night of the men's grand final. So was, you know, they're celebrating you, which was tough for Wakefield. But much like the season, at the start of the season, they, they remain confident, they remain with spirits ahead of whatever is happening in 2021 because nothing's been announced yet, even though we know something's going to be announced. St. Helens beat Leeds 28 0, was it, in the end? Yeah. Um, and I think that was probably a fair result. Probably the try from Jody Cunningham, uh, from yeah, it was Jody Cunningham just before half time, was it? Um, was when she just come back from the sin bin? Uh, Saints players in sin bins and uh, Amy Hardcastle, who as we discover this week, uh, thanks to Carrie Robert Street's nickname is Amy Hardbastard, which is a great nickname, and, mm. and that's that's the kind of nickname we need more of in rugby league. Um, she's got a great try. Um, just after half time, I think it was. Seems a long time ago now, but they were the best team all season. They won the grand final, and there's nothing yeah. much you can say else about that. I think they just need um, fighting for what they've achieved because to do a treble in any sport is astonishing. That was first against second, but the gap was about 28 points, which again is astonishing that they're that, they're that much better than their rivals. I think um, the profile of women's rugby league has has been fantastic this year. Um, I know that there are some people uh, within the RFL that, that want it to walk before it runs. I, I think you can let it off the leash a little bit after what we've seen this year. I'd like to see, although I, I know it's not going to happen, uh, maybe whatever the format is next year includes perhaps Cardiff and maybe the Army in the Premier Division or First Division. Or that, uh, It's not going to happen in 2022. I think that is a plan a little bit further down the line. But it, I, I think we should mention the Wales Island women's game um, on, on some, uh, Sunday that's just gone. Um, historic, you know, Wales' first home women's international. Ireland's first ever international. I watched the second half because um, I had to watch the Euro D final while, <laughs> that was on during the first half. Um, and it was brilliant. Great standard, considering both teams are such novices, really something to build on. Um, Wales scored six tries to five, and in Fionn Lewis have got an absolute potential superstar of, of women's rugby league. Uh, and, and, and the Irish, clearly, you know, Pitt Birchall had, had played the week before for St Helens in their grand final. We're starting to build stories. There's real traction in this. Um, we we banged on for long enough about women's rugby league. I think now people can just look at that St Helens grand final performance, look at some of the, you know, w- watch the international game tomorrow between England and France. It, it'll be great, you know, seeing women on the BBC preceding the men in the same stadium. It'll look brilliant. And uh, the French are talking confidently, the French women. Um, I don't think they, they stand a chance with 10 St. Helens players being the core of uh, the England team. But it's a great watch. It's International Rugby League. It's a year out from the World Cup. We can sell this. So, uh, no, I think it, it was a fitting end to the season, a record crowd, um, which it, it was mentioned at the time. And, and that genuinely was a record crowd. And, and I have to say, without any disrespect whatsoever to Huddersfield and their men's fans, there were a lot of fans there supporting the women and they were really loud. They were. Um, and th- and that's great. You know, that, that is a new market. So you, your dog's just eating. Your yeah, I, I was, I'll be back in a second. Bear, bear with me, dude. Bear with me. I, mean, I have no idea how that will look because that'll be good. Um, we were talking about the uh, <laughs> talking about the uh, the women's game between Wales and Ireland and England versus France coming up on Saturday. We're going to hear from uh, Craig Richards, the England coach, in a minute uh, about that game and issues within women's Super League, of course. We mentioned Shona Hoyle moving, uh, probably another few players leaving Castleford as well, one of which we know because she's now a rhino because uh, I think the cat was out of the bag. Someone asked in the press conference afterwards, didn't they? Because I saw quotes about this to uh, Lois. But uh, Georgia Roach is now a Leeds Rhinos player, which is uh, another big signing. Two of the three mm-hmm. women of steel in history are in that squad. Yep. Um, I think that's going to, again... It's, it's probably going to help lessen that gap with how good St Helens were this year by sharing out the talent, which is great. I think um, Leeds, have, Leeds have had a retiree after the end of that uh, grand final as well. So uh, Yeah, I think I I'm spoiled sure, that, didn't I? I'm sure it won't be long before uh, she may well come on the programme and give us her version of her career and her events. Um, 
So, yeah, I think it's it's a big signing for Leeds. But I don't know where actually George's best position is, uh, but I suspect at Leeds it could be loose forward. She could be the female Blake Austin. Um, but no, it's uh, the, the, there's something clearly um, that Castleford need to address, which I you don't need us to tell us that. Um, but, you know, they, they have had the bulk of their great team of a couple of years ago now leave them so some something that they need to take in hand but but yeah sharing out the talent um can only be good and uh they, you know before before you sort of move on to to the england side do you think to to tie up that international element um your od was was great i think congratulations to the the netherlands for not only winning it and getting promoted to Euro B, and there is a C, but they haven't played this year because of COVID. So it'll all be reconfigured for, for next year and it'll all become part of World Cup qualifying for 2025. So the Netherlands are still on that path, which is great. But hats off to Turkey, who staged it superbly. Um, great great for the Czech Republic or Czechia to get to the final. Um, I think Malta ran out of players, but again, got a lot out of playing international rugby league again i think great news as well that the and, and if i was wearing a hat i would now be taking it off furiously to lebanon um quite how they have managed to stage a domestic season with everything that is going on in their country at the moment um i, I you know to, to get to a, a stage where they could stream a game as the end of that season is just just astonishing um, and international rugby league over the last um, couple of weeks has, has been massive and it's it's not been the World Cup we expected but it was even great watching Jamaica and the England Knights last week I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully being at Featherstone on Sunday for the their game against Scotland it, 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 I guess you say it's not about results it's about a different exposure for the sport it is right let, let's hear from Craig Richards and then we'll talk about the, the England games coming up on on Saturday and uh, this was as part of a uh, exciting teams meeting yesterday teams is rubbish um, and I hope the RFL are watching this. Teams is rubbish. Stop using Teams. Uh, it's a nightmare to edit. But uh, here is Craig Richards answering some uh, journalistic questions, hard journalistic questions uh, posed by, by me. What, what are we expecting from uh, France this weekend? Um, it, it, it's a tough one. 2017, we beat them 14-8 to beat them. Lois Forcell jumps over from dummy half and, and sneaks as a win. 2018, we go over a young squad supported with some great experience, um, you know, um, and we're beating 54-4. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I would imagine they've worked just as hard as what we've worked in, in within um, that time. So and they will have made changes of players. So I don't really know what to expect. Um, but what I do know is we're preparing for a tough battle. We're hoping it's a tough battle. But we're preparing for a real tough battle that you know will be decided at the back end of the game. And, and listen, if it isn't that, if it's similar to what it was last time, we'll be ruthless, we'll be relentless, and, and we'll just concentrate on showcasing our own skills. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, we, we've got to worry about ourselves, and we've got to prepare as though we, we're playing the world's best. We've just seen Ireland play their first game against Wales. We're obviously a developing nation. Scotland are starting their programme. How important is it that they build up their squads to give you more localised competition, uh, not just ahead of the next World Cup, but World Cups going forward? Yeah, listen, it's not all probably just about England, but from my point of view, it is. Um, I just think we've got to work together as um, as nations to help improve each other. Um until they get really strong, until we're, until we're facing Wales and that game's being decided in the last five minutes of the game or the last two minutes of the game or the last kick of the game, until we get to that level, um, we'll, we'll never truly get to where we want to be. Um, you know, so yeah, it, it, we, we've got to support them, we've got to work with them, we've got to get them as strong as possible without losing to them uh, to propel us to where we want to be, which is... It's not just about being world champions, it's being back-to-back world champions and, you know, um, competing on a world stage on a regular basis. It would be very hard not to pick a majority of St Helens players for this squad with how the season's gone. Is it a concern that a lot of the, the talent is moving towards two or three clubs rather than being spread throughout the league, as some suggest? Is it a concern? I suppose it's a slight concern. Um 
you know, but th- th- there's a reason why players are going to a certain club. We see, we're already seeing movement. There's more movement to come. It is a concern. Um, ideally, again, the, the league would be um, a little bit more equal. But, you know, if, if you ask Leeds, if you ask Saints, York, if you ask them teams to take the foot off the gas, they're not going to do. So, unfortunately, the rest are going to have to catch up um, unless we can do something internally about it um, where there's some sort of, you know, structure where the talent spread across the teams. Um, but that would take um, a massive financial boost, wouldn't it, to be fair, to get people to, to, to drive to the other end of the country. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 you would like to see a more even Super League. Um, but at the moment, it is what it is. We've got a few injuries within the squad, um, but we've still got a real strong bunch to pick from. And, and my job is first and foremost to ignore the clubs that the players come from and just pick what I feel is the best 20, regardless of, of, of who you, you play for. You know, we see Sean or I will go to Huddersfield who, who didn't make the, the top six. You know, how big is that for them? Will other players follow? You know, how much will she improve them? How much will they improve training and and playing alongside a player like that, they're the types of good news stories that I want to see. Um, so, so yeah, I hope I've answered your questions somewhere and all that babble. But, but, but yeah, we, we, we've got to do something about it. But first and foremost, it starts with the clubs doing something about it. And of those clubs, Saints and Leeds, the top two teams in the competition, as we've seen throughout the last few years, you must want to see more games like we saw in the grand final and the semi final in this Challenge Cup where the players are being challenged on a, a, an intensity level higher than those games where they obviously win by 60, 70 points. Yeah, of course. You know, one of the things that we, first things I look at at, at the end of the, the week when all the games are being played is is um, is a GPS to try and have a look at the intensity and to try and measure that up to international games. And unfortunately, there's just not enough games where we're getting anywhere near it. In fact, it tends to be the semi-finals, the finals, the top two playing each other where where we're getting close, which it, it doesn't hurt, help the international program. You know, you know, you, you need intensity week in week out. Um, but you know, we've got to go with what we've got, and we've got to just continue to work hard like we, what we've done for four years and. And almost from from my point of view, from an England point of view, not make excuses. You know, we have to find that intensity in training to overcome what's happening in the game sometimes. So, so that's what we do. You have the science to back up intensity. We just have to make it up in our heads when we're watching from the stands. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, a final one, in terms of uh, young players coming through, um, I know obviously this year has been a, a nightmare in terms of arranging things, but. How important is getting a, an England Knights? I know the, the coaching staff is in place to get them a fixture next year ahead of the World Cup, just in case you need some extra players to bring into the squad. Yeah, um, yeah. For me, I don't even know that they need a, a fixture. I think it's about getting the Knights program together and make sure it's a really good development program. Um, and I think what you do is you do something similar to what the men did this week, and you run against each other in terms of the England women's against the Knights. Um, what the Knights players, and what sorry, what the Knights program can and will do is put um, players in the window for the full England squad. So, for instance, um, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but Kira Bennett on the back of the final has now come into the full England squad. I've been previously been in the Knights, and I know she had a few injuries, so it, it's working because you kind of see these players at the club level. But I got to see him on the Knights programme, chat to him, find out a little bit more about him. Because, you know, it's not just about talent, it's the person as well. Because we want to bring the correct people into our environment that enhance it and, and you know, and, and don't depreciate what we've got. So, you know, we've already seen with players like Kira, where we've, we've had a chance to have a look at her. She's had a big grand final and um, and she's coming to the squad. Probably just a bit unlucky if she's um, suffering with concussion at the minute. Otherwise, she would have actually been considered. I mean, we talk about trying to level up the competition. At least it might be a two-horse race now instead of one next year. But you know, Craig mentions um, intensity, which he has uh, been able to measure from GPS. We just say since Leeds that looked intense. Um, and, you know, hopefully England versus France, both women's and men's games tomorrow have some level of intensity to them. Certainly, being held in France is much better than being played at Lee or Doncaster in front of three people. Um, so hopefully there's a good crowd down there at uh, the Stade Gilbert Brutus. And, I think there will uh, be. 
Good, uh, good, and and hopefully yeah, both games are, are well supported and 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 entertaining, as you say. It, this is not the international window we wanted this year. Everything's been thrown together, so I can kind of uh, I know people moan about things and say no, there was no marketing of the Jamaica England game the other week, and so it has been very last minute. So you know it is what it is. But we hopefully you know got a good opportunity on the telly, BBC two for the women, BBC one for the men. A nice uh, window for uh, everyone to uh, put on their uh, best show. Well, French rugby league is on a high. We've, we've spoken about that towards the end of this season. You know, the, not, not just the Dragons, but Toulouse as well. Uh, the World Cup hopefully being there in 2025. This, this is a really important political statement for people in France to, to have a, an international over there that is meaningful. Negotiations continue with French broadcasters. And again, mm. all of this, if, if it's part of what you can offer... Um, is 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 fantastic. So um, clearly, you know, I, um, I, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I think it, it will look good. It will sound good. It will have a great atmosphere. I also do think that um, there is a possibility that it'll be a very very close and uh, or the men's game will be close and and competitive. England will be making what uh, I think six probably debutants. Um, and, and clearly there are some star names who are not available, but I think that just makes it more of a contest and uh, French rugby league is on a high. Brilliant. Let's let's bring it on. Let's dominate the BBC schedules and uh, and go for it. A bargain hunt, it's us. And at least, you know, uh, Sean Wayne has given people an opportunity to win this week by making John Bateman the captain, having not had the best of season domestically for Wigan. So, you know, it's all good. Yeah, John Bateman, who is the most cap player in the squad, which makes sense to make him captain. Yeah, him. It's a big day of international sports. I just noticed. Obviously, we've got the uh, the women's international on BBC Two at whenever it is, half past eleven. Uh, then you switch over to BBC One, and then straight after the England women are on. Uh, the footballers are on um, ITV One. So as I say, it's a it's a big day of international sport. And as we keep saying, we've got to push. We've got to push, and and to be on BBC Two and BBC One on a Saturday afternoon, last minute. It would be easy for the BBC not to cover these games. It's, it's just great. To, it's great to be part of it. And what will happen when we get round to the World Cup next year is it will form a suite of events in this country, along with the Commonwealth Games and the Women's Euros and the World Gymnastic Championships and leading into the Soccer World Cup. And that, that's what we want. You know, we, we want people to say, oh, yeah, rugby league, that, I'll, I'll watch a bit of that because it's it's, you know, this whole tranche of international games and to get to a point where that World Cup is meaningful you have to have matches like we've got this weekend and I think the, the main thing for Jamaica a nation like that who play a, a world rank oh yeah a world ranking match against Scotland on Sunday they now get the experience of playing two high intensity games in the same week that's what it's going to be like when they're in the World Cup this can only do them good irrespective of what the results are uh, one man who hopefully will be playing in that game, because if he is, he'll make his debut, is Isaac Farrell. And I've just been speaking to him, and here he is in his car. Isaac, thanks for joining us. Uh, obviously, big game coming up on, on Sunday against uh, Scotland. What's the mood like in the Jamaica camp going into that one? Yeah, I mean, we took a, quite a beating last week against England Knights. To, f- to be fair to them, they were a really good, well-drilled uh, well team. But um, we've looked back, we've reflected on the performance last Friday and um, seeing that we're trying to put right and the vibes in the camp they're very good at the moment everyone's starting to believe like believe the process um, proper buy-in everyone's working hard so I mean everything's clicking together we've just had a good field session then we've got another one later on this afternoon so I mean if it's anywhere near as good as it was this morning then I think we'll be going into the game on Sunday very well uh, and you, you would dig up against a, a very experienced squad. Well, I mean, inexperienced in terms of age, but experienced in terms of Super League players in that game on, on Friday. Uh, a big test for you there uh, as a squad. And I guess you'll have learned plenty from that. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it was a very good, very good team. Um, it's um, where we really need to be, especially if we're going to be playing in the World Cup next year, is our standards have to be that high. They. They play, They started. Um, they started well, and it didn't break off till the 80th minute. So um, we've got to make sure that we can stay uh, consistent with how we finish the sets, how we defend, 
just our attitude, really. Just never never say die attitude because, I mean, over the past couple of years watching this team, there's been so much camaraderie and so much brotherhood that no one gives up ever. And, I mean, on Friday night, sort of felt like it got that way. But, I mean, against a well-drilled team, that full-time environment, I mean, it's it's going to be a tough... It'll be a tough night for anyone, really, <laughs> to give anyone a good game. So, no, it's just... um. I'm glad that it's happened now so that I can uh, fix it before next year. Yeah, Scotland on Sunday. What are you expecting from the Scots at Featherstone? A tough game. I think um, it'd be a game for the middles, really. If our middles can step up to theirs and um, go toe-to-toe with them, then I feel like we've got a really good chance of coming away with um, winning this game. We've got um, the likes of like Michael Lawrence, very experienced player. We've got Ash, who can play in the middle. We've got um, a fair few other Super League names that have been in Super League, very good championship players, good League One players. And uh, everyone's just really wanting to just get a result this weekend. Well, as you say, going into the World Cup next year, obviously we all wanted it to be going on right now, but it gives you an extra year to prepare it and, and get ready for those big tests ahead. Yeah, I mean, we're playing against the best of the best, really, when it comes to World Cup. Um, especially the teams like New Zealand be a full NRL team Lebanon majority will be an NRL team and we've got Ireland as well another good team Super League experience good championship players it's um, it's a built, it's a stepping stone really this weekend it's going to help us prepare for that next year what standard we need to get up to but next year is going to be a whole new kettle of fish so I mean I think we're all just looking forward to that I know it's been pushed back another year but Everyone's just ready to rip in now. Everyone's looking forward to next season and hoping to stay fit and healthy and then get selected for squad at the end of the year. So is it likely to be a debut on Sunday for Jamaica? What does that mean to you to represent the Jamaican heritage? Yeah, um, yeah, it'll be my debut if I play on Sunday. Um, it'll be a big honour for me, obviously. My brother's he's played a fair few games for Jamaica so, and he tells me how good it is every time that he play. So, I mean, representing my heritage... Um, it's a very big, it's a big thing for me, especially family-wise. Um, family's like the main thing that keeps me going playing rugby, really. It's everyone around me. They're the one that support me. So re- being able to um, go out represent Jamaica, it's um, just nothing more I could wish for. Oh, you mentioned your family. When your dad was playing, there was no Jamaican national team. He played for England and Wales. So he, <laughs> he had a, a couple of uh, shots at international glory. Has he given you any advice going into this? Just said to go out, express myself, just play how I play. He says, don't worry about the scoreline, don't worry about anything, just worry about how I play. So, taking that, um, taking that full on. So, yeah, that's that's just me this weekend, just express myself. That is, as we say, we're we're a year away from the World Cup. It is exciting, and and as we saw a couple of years ago when England Knights played Jamaica at Headingley, a, a packed crowd there, and plenty of Jamaican support. And I guess you'd be hoping that a on Sunday and b going forward in the World Cup next year. Yeah, I mean, it's always better when you've got um, a loud fan base behind you. The game at England, well, the game against England Knights at Edinburgh, that was just a prime example. Seeing how many people were there holding Jamaican flags, everyone just wanted to get out and support us, really. So once in a, well, some people wouldn't have thought that Jamaica had made it this far. No one thought Jamaica would have qualified for a World Cup. So, I mean, we're just defying the odds once again. So, I mean, to have like this, this so much support at games, um, just like on social media, you can see everything. It gives us, and the, it gives me and the boys a big boost, and it, um, I mean, it gets us going really, knowing that we've got this big fan base behind us. We can't let them down. It looks like the, the bookmakers make you underdogs on on, so they're not like you'll care about that. But is that the kind of thing you'd like? You you like the underdog spirit fighting up against the bigger bigger sides? Um, I, I mean, the bookies obviously they'll they won't put us as favourites. They'll. They were, eh, I don't think people are believing us as much as we believe in ourselves. And I feel like once it all clicks together and people see what we can really do, then, I mean, hopefully some people change their minds about rugby league in Jamaica. I mean, this is a great story, this one, Phil, because obviously we remember his dad playing. And I, I did my research on Wikipedia, as I always do. Played for England and played for Wales. And here he is... Uh, Two of his sons are playing lightly for Jamaica on, on Sunday. Um, when he, their dad played, Jamaica Rugby League wasn't a thing. 
which shows yep. you how quickly things change and, and they're able to represent their heritage in this international. Scotland, the favourites with the bookmakers, as I, I said to Isaac, but you know, they're going to go in as underdogs, but I'm not, I'm not so sure they are in this. This could be a very interesting game. I think there's more Super League players playing for Scotland, so that would be why they were favourites. Um, but I think having been in camp for a week, um, you know, m- maybe Jamaica will be a more cohesive unit. The one thing I would say about their match against the England Knights um, is it doesn't half show the prospects we've got in the game at the moment, uh, whether they're English, Welsh, Jamaican, whatever. But you know the likes of Will Price, Mikey Lewis, um, absolutely outstanding. Uh, Jack Broadbent, a couple of tries, and Matty Ashton, a couple of tries. That You looked at that and thought, wow, I'm already excited for the 2025 World Cup if these guys are going to be the core of the England team. So the shame is we don't know when they're playing again next. Um, and so we do need to sort out the international calendar. And I, you hear everybody who asks about saying, "Oh, it's a priority. We're on with it." And then we would, we was just about there, and then COVID hit. You so like we've been talking about an international calendar for as long as I've been watching rugby league. Can we please get this sorted out and sorted out quickly? But um, you know, there, there was absolutely no shame in Jamaica losing to that England Knights team. There is some great talent at our disposal, um, and and Jamaica will benefit from playing them. If I wasn't working, I'd be down there on Sunday to watch that because that should be a, a an, an interesting game. You'd like to see close the home the home of Brian McDermott. Indeed, um, I mean, I went to see Wales Jamaica. Would well, that be four years ago now at uh, Wakefield? Was that the drawn game? It was. Oh, Great you were there game. as well. I remember, yeah. Um, that seems that does seem like a long, long, long time ago now, doesn't it? Every, everything uh, time I know is a, a, a strange construct at the minute, but that does seem a long time ago. Uh, yeah, Brian McDermott, we, well, he, James Webster apparently didn't want to coach in Super League. So uh, uh, I did read someone say he didn't have the drive, uh, which I thought was an interesting word to use with Fence and Rovers at the moment, but there you go. Um, but uh, we should talk about that game because um, Toulouse beat Featherson, they're in Super League. Um, Uncle Ken, our other Uncle Ken, he, he's welcomed them in. Bienvenue. Um, shame for Featherson because you know, they get so close again. But uh, the championship is set, set to be a, a fascinating competition next year and Fenton will be a big part of that. Absolutely. And I think um, what's at stake in the championship, whether you believe that two tens is the way to go, well, look, it, it, look, you know, we had uh, Simon Johnson on the podcast, what was it, a month ago, basically saying it, it's not signed off yet, but this is the road that we're going down, which means it's going to happen. Um, you know, that makes the championship incredibly intense because... You know, you've got to finish in the top eight and you don't know where you're going to be the year after that. Um, there's a talk of three teams getting relegated from Super League at the end of next year. So that's, you know, to go from 12 till 10, but also leaving a door open to the winners of the championship to, to be in the top 10 as opposed to the second 10. Uh, so that, that element of uh, promotion is still open to the championship. Um, however, that eventually works out, um, whether you agree with 10s as a growth principle or, or you think it's stagnation of the worst kind. Um, it does, it doesn't matter. It, uh, you know, you look at Featherstone are in there, Bradford are rebuilding and continually saying Halifax, I'm told, uh, splashing the cash. Um, if there's only going to be eight spots that will be in the 10, then, um, with two coming down from super league, then yeah, uh, both, both competitions are going to be, uh, should be incredible. You know, when teams are recruiting, wouldn't it be nice if they knew if three were going to be relegated from Super League right now? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know how any of this works. We I mean, no one knows what's going to happen to League One. Um, TV figures for the million pound game, which is still a rubbish name. I think it was 137,000 off the top of my head. Um, the uh, not Alanis Morissette ironic news about that, of course, is next year there's no chance of any game in the championship getting anywhere near that and perhaps not even combined over the year. Um, I've said my piece on this deal um, before it was signed and I, there's nothing that has come out since that has changed my mind about anything I said. Um, the word vanity springs to mind. It is exactly that. It is being on TV for the sake of being on TV. <laughs> and it's, it's a few quid for the chairman that need a few quid. Yeah. It's an expedient move. Um, whether it's the right move, time will tell. My concern is from the other side. I think we're asking too much of our fans to subscribe to so many different outlets. Um, but actually, then it becomes a little bit counterproductive. But 
We shall see. It, it, it comes to a point where if you are a fan of a team in the Super League, you haven't just got Sky or Virgin or whatever. You've also got probably Netflix. You may have Amazon Prime. You may have Disney Plus. Do you want to add on another 10 quid a month for one game a week in which you may not, you know, may not be around to watch, you may not be interested in the teams? I think it's a very tough sell. Um, I think, well, I think the other thing to add into that is that at some point there has to be some charge for our league. Um, and clearly we saw that with the Jordan Turner testimonial because quite rightly the money was uh, channeled towards him. But I, I suspect we won't get the viewing figures for that of how many people actually paid. But for our league to continue to be an asset at some point, you have to get a return on that asset. And again, if you're then asking people to perhaps have a digital season ticket, um, you know, tenner a month for our league, which which all of us would probably pay because the content that they've got on there is many and varied. Um, but again, are you then competing against yourself? It's uh, it's a tough one. We, we, you know, we we saw what kind of numbers you can get on Facebook when Bradford were on there, although they started off huge and, and dwindled, uh, which people forget because you just go with one figure and jump up and down about it, but. It, it, it doesn't make any No one can convince me it makes any sense. So there's, there's no point even... I'm like one of those people who goes into hospitals with the Magna Carta. You can't convince me otherwise, even though you may think I'm stupid. I'm, I'm not going to change my mind. I am not one of those people, by the way. Um, is all the rugby league news? Is, is, is there anything else? Yeah, I think, I think we're pretty much up to date. I, I reckon it? we'll have a really interesting programme mm. early next week uh, where a lot of issues uh, about the, st- the sport and the state of the sport can be... Um, you know, um, um, discussed and debated. And if we've missed anything, we'll pick it up there. But no, I'm looking forward to the last week of the season. <laughs> Did it officially finish on Sunday? As soon as the Hooter goes at the Millennium Stadium? I, th- I think it, there's two wheelchair internationals. Oh, yes, apart from yes, that, I reckon yes, uh, it probably is. Because they're kind of detached from this weekend. I- I'd forgotten about them and didn't mean to. Yes, that's the, is it the 10th and 13th of November. So midweek and a Sunday game. So, yeah, they're, they're coming up. So th- don't forget about those. But, uh, uh, yes, of, of the running game, the running game. That's yes. That's, um, although having been at that testimony on uh, on Wednesday, walking game was more uh, more out. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. And, and we'll, we'll look forward to Brian McDermott turning up at Fev. Big big city yes. Fev. Big yeah, city Brian. Yeah. It's it's always the irony will not be lost. I don't think. No, he, he won't. He won't. He won't. Um, so on, on those bombshells, back Tuesday, six o'clock live um, on YouTube. Make sure you're with us for that one. We do have some interesting shows planned over the next uh, uh, months or so. Well, at least one more. Uh, <laughs> so, so we'll put Danica down anyway. She'll come in. Uh, so at least two uh, exciting shows. Well, it, it's ad hoc now. Now, now the season. Yeah, gone. absolutely. Exactly I mean, how it should be. I know it was during the season just gone, but that was twenty twenty. It's strange here. But uh, join us again by the magazine and uh, join us on uh, Tuesday at six for a very special guest to talk about uh, the future of rugby league.